Hey everyone and welcome back for another deep dive. Today we're tackling a topic that I think keeps most business leaders up at night. Customer churn. It's the silent killer. Right. Totally. But here's the thing. We're not just talking about knowing it's happening. We're talking about getting ahead of it. Mm -hmm. We've got a fantastic article here from Graphex all about building those churn prediction models. And let me tell you, it is eye-opening. What I find fascinating is how often businesses get so laser-focused on snagging those new customers that they kind of forget about the gold they've already got. Oh, it's like pouring water into a leaky bucket, right? Yeah. You can keep adding more, but if you don't fix those leaks... You're never going to fill it up. And that's where this whole idea of churn prediction comes in. Right. Now, I know some folks might be thinking, but wait, I've seen those basic churn scores, the ones that give you a percentage. What's different here? It's like this, those simple scores, they just tell you who might be about to jump ship. What we're talking about here is understanding the why. So it's less about knowing, okay, there's a chance this customer might leave, and more about figuring out, okay, what can we actually do about it? Exactly. It's about getting those insights that actually let you take action. Okay, so let's break it down. The article kicks things off talking about these engagement levels. They break it down into a few different categories, right? You've got those customers who never really seem to get going. Right, just never really engaged. Then there are those who were totally vibing for a while and then just faded out. And of course, you've got those sudden, out-of-nowhere exits. Always a fun surprise. The worst. But here's the thing. The article points out that each of those scenarios could point to a totally different root cause. Absolutely. For example, let's say you've got a customer who never really engaged. They might just be what we call a poor customer fit right from the get-go. It's like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole, right? Exactly. And this is where having a crystal clear picture of your ideal customer profile, that ICP, becomes so crucial. Totally. And the article even points out that this whole poor customer fit situation, it's a major culprit behind sky-high churn rates, especially for companies who are going all in on advertising. Right. They're casting a wide net, which isn't a bad thing, but... You don't want just any fish in your pond. Exactly. And what a lot of companies overlook is the cost of attracting all those misaligned customers. Because it's not just about the lost revenue when they churn. It's all the money, time, effort you poured into trying to make it work. All those resources gone, which is why it's so important to spot those poor fit customers early on. Right. And one of the things I found really interesting was how they talked about using things like basic company demographics to try to get ahead of this. Oh, absolutely. It's like instead of sending out this generic message to everyone under the sun. You get laser focused with your approach. Exactly. Think about it. If you're selling, say, software that's designed for these massive companies... You're not going to spend your time marketing to individual freelancers. Right. You're going to focus on businesses of a certain size, maybe in specific industries, probably with a certain revenue stream. That kind of data, it helps you fine-tune that targeting and set realistic expectations from the very beginning. It's all about finding your people. 100%. Now, speaking of setting those realistic expectations, let's talk about those customers who... They start off engaged, everything's humming along, and then... And then they go quiet. Exactly. Their interest just kind of fades away. Happens to the best of us. It really does. And what's interesting is the article points out that this is where things can get a little more complex. Because the reasons behind that decline in engagement, they can be all over the place. Oh, yeah. It's not always a simple answer. So it's less about going, okay, they're less active, they're definitely out of here, and more about asking. Why has their behavior changed? Exactly. And then the big one. What can we do to re-spark that interest? Because sometimes it's something really simple. Sometimes it's as simple as, you know, they need a new feature or maybe their needs have changed. Or sometimes, as much as it stings to admit, maybe they've just outgrown what you're offering. It happens. Not every customer is meant to be a lifer. Right? It's just that the key is knowing when it's time to, you know, let go gracefully. Exactly. Instead of pouring all that energy into a relationship that's run its course. Totally. Now, we've talked about those who never really get going, those who slowly fade out. But what about those sudden, out-of-nowhere churn bombs? The article mentioned a few surprisingly common culprits. Ah, uh, yes, the dreaded sudden death churn. Those are always a fun challenge. Because it's like, what happened? Everything seemed fine. Right. It's like they just vanished into thin air. And, you know, one thing the article mentioned that really stuck with me was billing issues. Oh, tell me about it. You'd think in this day and age. You'd think it wouldn't be a thing, but it's huge. You know, 
credit card expires, they forget to update their info, next thing you know, bam, they're gone. It seems so avoidable. Right. And the article actually mentioned this being responsible for a whopping 5% of total churn for some businesses. Seriously? 5%? That's what they're saying. So, you know, sometimes a well-timed email reminder. Save the day. A hundred percent. And, you know, that's just one example. We've also got things like, you know, regulation changes. Oh, right. Those could really throw a wrench in things. Absolutely. Like, suddenly your product or service is unusable in a certain market. Talk uh, about a curveball, right? Talk about a churn prediction nightmare. Okay, so we've got a good handle on all the different flavors of churn and why it's so important to understand those nuances. But let's get down to brass tacks here. What kind of data do we actually need to be collecting to build a churn prediction model that's actually useful? Because let's be real, data without insights is just noise. Oh, it's true. You can have all the data in the world, but if you don't know what to do with it... It's useless. A hundred percent. So the article kicks things off with transactional sales data. Okay, so that one seems kind of obvious, right? We need to know what they're buying. Sure, sure. But it goes deeper than that. It's not just about what they bought. It's about when they bought it, how often they're buying it. It's about understanding those buying patterns. Exactly. Let's say you've got a business that relies heavily on subscriptions, right? Think like software companies, those meal kit services, that kind of thing. Those recurring revenue models. Exactly. So tracking the frequency of those transactions, that tells you a story. If you've got someone who's normally clocking in like clockwork and then suddenly crickets, that's a much bigger red flag than, say, someone who was never a super frequent buyer in the first place. It's like the difference between someone who gets their morning coffee from the same place every single day. And then one day they're just gone. Exactly. You know something's up. Exactly. So understanding the context of those transactions, that's key. Okay. And speaking of knowing something's up, the article also dives into what they call usage slash consumption data. This is where things get really interesting, especially in today's digital world, right? Oh, yeah. This is where we strike gold. Because now we're not just looking at those big picture transactions. We're talking about those digital footprints. Mm -hmm. We're seeing what features they're using, how often they're logging in, what pages they're visiting. You're getting those little glimpses into their behavior. Exactly. And that tells you so much about their experience. It's like having x-ray vision into how they're actually using what you've built. Exactly. You get to see the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? And that's how you uncover those hidden churn risks that might be lurking beneath the surface. Because you might think every Everything's fine. Meanwhile, they're struggling. Exactly. And this level of insight, it just wasn't possible before. We used to have to rely on like surveys and anecdotal feedback. And don't get me wrong, that stuff's important, but- It only tells part of the story. Exactly. With usage data, we're getting the unfiltered truth. Not just what they tell us they're doing, but what they're actually doing. It's like the difference between watching a cooking show and actually rolling up your sleeves and making the recipe yourself. Oh, I love that. Because you might think you've got it all figured out and then you realize, oh, there are all these little nuances, all these little tricks of the trade. Exactly. And you can't get those just from watching someone else do it. A hundred percent. And that's what makes this data so valuable for building those really effective churn prediction models. We're moving beyond these broad assumptions and we're diving into the specifics of each customer's journey. And speaking of specifics, the article also emphasized the importance of firmographic and demographic data. We talked about it a bit earlier with customer fit, but it sounds like it plays a much bigger role than just targeting. Oh, absolutely. Remember how we were talking about getting to the why behind churn? This is where that comes in. This data gives you the context. Let's say you start noticing a pattern, right? Hmm. A certain industry, a certain location, even a certain company size. They all seem to be churning at a higher rate than others. That's a pretty clear sign that something's up. Exactly. And it's not enough to just go, okay, well, this group's not sticking around. We need to dig deeper. We need to ask ourselves, is there something about our product, our pricing, our messaging that's just not resonating with this particular group? So it's about spotting those patterns and then using that information to either tweak our approach or adjust our expectations. Right? 100%. Maybe it means developing new features that are tailor-made for that specific industry. Maybe it means taking a hard look at your pricing strategy and figuring out if it makes sense for that market. It's all about meeting your customers where they are. Exactly. One size does not fit all. Which brings us to another really interesting point the article brought up, how the customer was acquired. You know, I'll be honest, I never would have thought of that as a churn predictor. 
it's not always obvious, but it can be super insightful. Like the article mentioned that customers who come through referrals, they tend to be the most loyal, which I mean, makes sense. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Word of mouth is powerful stuff. Exactly. Because if someone you trust recommends something, you're much more likely to give it a shot and actually stick with it. It's like having a built-in seal of approval. Exactly. And on the flip side, folks who maybe signed up through certain marketing campaigns, they might be more likely to churn. Because maybe they were initially drawn in by a specific offer or a discount, that kind of thing. Right. And that's all well and good, but it might not necessarily mean they're in it for the long haul. So it's not just about that initial conversion. It's about understanding their mindset. Right? Exactly. What was it that motivated them to sign up in the first place? Because if we understand that, we can create a more personalized experience. And that's why tracking this data is so valuable. It allows you to segment your customer base and analyze their behavior accordingly. You might find, for example, that people who found you through organic search, super engaged, rarely churn, but then those who clicked on a specific social media ad, bouncing all over the place. So interesting how that works. It's all connected. And that means you can start making smarter decisions about your marketing budget, your messaging, your whole customer acquisition strategy. Optimize that entire life cycle. A hundred percent from the moment they first hear about you to hopefully becoming those diehard fans who rave about you to all their friends. And speaking of those loyal fans, there's one last data point the article mentioned that I feel like sometimes flies under the radar. Customer satisfaction data. Ah, yes. Those support interactions, those NPS scores, all those little nuggets that tell you so much about the customer experience. Because a high NPS score, that's fantastic, but it doesn't tell the whole story, right? Right. We want to know why they're happy. What is it about your product or service that's really hitting the mark? Are they over the moon about your customer service? Or maybe it's the overall value proposition. We need to dig into those details. And then, of course, on the flip side, if someone's constantly blowing up your support line. Or leaving those not so glowing reviews. That's a red flag we can't ignore. Not if we want to keep them around. It's a clear sign that something needs to change. And it might be a golden opportunity to step in, turn that frown upside down, and save that customer before they head for the exit. All right, so we've covered a ton of ground here. We talked about why it's so important to understand that why behind churn the different types of churn you might encounter, all the data that can help us predict and prevent it. But this all begs the question, who benefits the most from building these churn prediction models? Is this something every business should be thinking about? Or are there certain types of companies that really stand to gain the most? That is the million dollar question. And the article does a really nice job of breaking it down, highlighting a few key factors to consider. One of the biggest is simply the size of your customer base. Right, because if you've only got a handful of customers... It's probably not going to make or break you if one or two decide to jump ship. But if you've got thousands or even millions of customers... Even a tiny improvement in your churn rate can have a massive impact. Absolutely. The bigger the ship, the more those leaks matter, right? And this is especially true for businesses that are built on those recurring revenue models, like those subscription-based services we were talking about. Every customer you keep is revenue that keeps on coming. Exactly. So yeah, for those companies, it's not just about plugging the holes. It's about making sure that revenue stream just keeps flowing. Like a river that never runs dry. Now you're getting it. And it's not just about the sheer number of customers either. The article also mentioned customer diversity as a key factor. Right, because it's not just about sheer volume. If you've got all these different types of customers with different needs, different behaviors, different reasons for leaving, it can be tough to spot those churn patterns just by looking at the raw data. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Except the haystack is a mountain of data. And there are actually multiple types of needles you're looking for. Oh, man. Talk about a headache. Right. That's where a churn prediction model comes in. Yeah. It's like having this super powered magnet that pulls those needles right to you. I love that analogy. It makes so much sense. And speaking of complexity, you know, the article also made a point of saying that churn prediction, it's not just for these giant corporations with endless resources, right? Uh, Even startups can get in on the action. Absolutely. In fact, for startups, especially those who are just getting off the ground understanding churn, it can be mission critical because they might not have the luxury of just throwing money at acquiring new customers left and right. It's true. When you're starting out, every single customer counts. Exactly. So holding on to the ones they've already convinced, that's everything. It's like that old saying, it's cheaper to keep a current customer happy than it is to convince a new one to sign up. A hundred percent. 
And especially for startups that are still kind of figuring out their ideal customer profile, a churn prediction model, game changer. Because if they can analyze what makes their most loyal customers tick... They can go out and find more just like them. Exactly. So yeah, it's not just about damage control, plugging those leaks. It's about using that knowledge to grow smarter and build a more sustainable business. Well, there you have it, folks. We've explored the ins and outs of customer churn. From understanding the why behind it, to the data that holds the key to predicting and preventing it. We've busted some myths about churn scores along the way. Dug deep into all the different flavors of churn you might encounter. We even uncovered that treasure trove of data that's often hiding in plain sight, just waiting to be transformed into those game-changing insights. And most importantly, we learned that no matter the size of your business, understanding your churn, it's not just a nice to have, it's a must have. It's about building stronger, healthier, more resilient businesses. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> That's a wrap on another deep dive. Until next time, keep those brains buzzing, keep that curiosity burning, and keep those churn rates low.